Hey, what's going on, guys? All right, so Texas Made Vape here, uh, doing a little YouTube series of just kind of what's going on with everybody's professions in the world, uh, in my local thing, and everything like that. Uh, today, uh, this today's series is going to be with uh, an ER uh, technician that I know, or an ER uh, person that I know uh, that I went to school with, and everything. Uh, I have a couple different other kind of people lined up, uh, such as teachers, uh, plumbers, mechanics. Uh, uh, and a lot of just varying degrees of everything else. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy this kind of first segment. This is the first video. Uh, I wasn't actually expecting uh, all of this that when we talked about what we talked about and everything to come up. If you guys have any other questions that you want me to ask, uh, ask him um, and get him back on. Um, he's more. He's been. Uh, he's happy to more than uh, come back on here and answer those questions. So if you guys have any questions with that, uh, that'd actually be really awesome. Just leave them down in the comments below. Uh, once we have enough, uh, we'll set. I'll set up another thing with him and everything. Uh, so let me know, guys. Thanks uh, and enjoy. All right. Uh, so I have an EMT worker here. Um, I'll kind of let you introduce yourself. Uh, what, what do you do? How did you get there? All of that fun stuff. And then we'll, uh, we'll move into some of the questions that we have. Cool. I am a paramedic in Austin. Um, I'm a paramedic in one of the ERs here in the DFW Metroplex. I work for one of like the big healthcare providers. And uh, instead of working on the ambulance, like most normal paramedics, I work in the ER full time. I got you. So, so you're not working from home. You are a huge essential employee. That's what they tell me. <laughs> That's what they tell me. Um, so, I, you know, we, we've kind of heard all over the news, everything that has been affecting uh, kind of the healthcare industry and the, and the hospitals and everything. What, I guess, as being an ER, in the ER and everything, what are you seeing different, uh, I guess, from patients coming in? Uh, to the ER, is it still kind of the same things that are normally expected, or is it more of right what what is happening right now? Um, I think a lot of the stuff that a lot of people are seeing is I think the scares are valid. Um, like straight up, I worked on the first guy who worked who died in North Texas from COVID nineteen. Wow, I. I got furloughed. I got paid two weeks to stay at home. Um, I never developed symptoms. No one here in my home did. Um, me, my wife, my roommate. But um, did 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 you get tested to see if you had any of the 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 antibodies or anything? I did not. Okay. Um, so I worked him on a Thursday. Um, I worked I worked Thursdays. I had Friday, Saturday off. I went back on Sunday. Um, in like the early stages of all this garbage, it was taking the normal turnaround time for the tests is or originally was a couple days. Right. Um, so we didn't know he was positive until probably the Monday after. Um, I got called by my boss and employee health and HR and all that. And they told me what had happened. And that I was being furloughed. Um, so because of the lack of tests and just all the uncertainty, I actually never got tested. Okay. Um, I was told to stay at home, self-monitor, take my temperature every twice or twice every day, and make sure that I never develop symptoms. If I did develop symptoms, I was supposed to call employee health and walk through all of it with them. Um, and go from there. So I got two weeks off, which was awesome. Um, full disclosure, I never got sick. I just got to hang around the house with my wife, and do some stuff around the house, um, hang out with the dogs, that kind of thing. <laughs> but <clears throat> afterwards. What happened is um, just that one guy who everyone came into contact with, they furloughed 31 people. Um, 
out of our hospital. Not the biggest hospital in Metroplex, but still. Well, thir- 31 people being furloughed because they had it, at some point contact with that person. I mean, that's a, it's that's, pretty that's major. A, that's a huge hit. Yeah, that's, a, that's yeah, a exactly. And so what happened is my company, they did the right thing, or they were trying to do the right thing, and they were like, okay, well, everyone, and it wasn't even like, so the way that it was working, people came in is we have criteria, and because tests were so limited, if you didn't meet the criteria, you weren't getting tested, whether yeah. you had it or not. Yeah. Um, we just didn't have enough tests to go around. Yeah. And so that gentleman did meet the criteria. He was just down in the ER. And, uh, you know, a couple of days later, he actually passed away because of it. And that's when they tested him and found out that he was positive. And so that was the first time that we had, my hospital had dealt with it. Um, and so they were like, we're going to play it safe. And yeah. I mean, that, kind of I mean that's that's kind of crazy. Just thinking about it, it's like he had it, and and you know he met the criteria kind of after the fact and everything. But it's like you know you were just thirty one people at the at the hospital, right? Not not including the possibly 10, 20, 30, 40 people in the emergency room or anything like that. They could have had more contact uh, uh, or anything, and it being transmittable that way. So that's kind of even crazy. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so that's the thing about Corona. I'm sure enough people have heard it. But like just the fact that you can be infectious and not be symptomatic is the problem with this thing. Yeah. And, I'm, and I, uh, yeah, my, my wife has been telling me the whole thing. It's like, man, people, you know, I, I talk to people and they're like, ah, I want to go out. It's like, you know, hey, if you have a compromised immune system or anything, you should stay in. It's like people don't understand. You still transmit. Right. Like you can be asymptomatic. You cannot have any symptoms whatsoever. And pass it along to thirty people. Right? Yeah, and that's <laughs> and that's what I was talking to some friends and my wife about. It. I was like, oh, sorry. Like, oh, you did. <laughs> um, as I was like, this, this is like Corona doesn't necessarily scare me, or it doesn't. I think that we, as the healthcare field and workers, you know, we were talking about it. Come on, Mike, I can hear you messing up. <laughs> You're um, fine we're talking about like this doesn't necessarily scare us like for 90 percent of the population or that's not true or fair but for most of the population especially your younger population it's just a really bad case of right and so this doesn't necessarily scare us but we were more worried about um you know say something like that the end game is like ebola like something that catastrophic yeah. that you can transmit asymptomatically and have a long incubation period and that's the kind of stuff that worries us yeah well i mean think about it. like i see I, I see my parents once a week just because they're close by me i hang out with them but they they are essentially kind of over that age that could be oh yeah that dude. are more susceptible and, and, it's terrifying and so you think about it, it's like hey i might be perfectly fine i might never have an issue or yeah. i might just have the sniffles but, I, uh, but if I pass it to them, what then happens, right? Exactly. It, you know. It, yeah. I uh, I told my parents straight up. I was like, look, man, like obviously I love you guys, but I won't be seeing you guys for a while. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> all whatever. Like mom loves to FaceTime, and I hate it. <laughs> but I was like, I'm not gonna be around. Or, like, the only time I've seen my dad a couple times because. We couldn't leave the house for a few days. Yeah. And so he went and grocery shopped for us like twice. Mm-hmm. But even then, like he dropped it off on the the porch and like stood at the end of our porch in the driveway. And, like we talked from that distance. Yeah. Yeah. But like <laughs> I haven't I haven't seen my mom in person in a month at least. Maybe two months. Oh yeah, and, yeah. It's 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 FaceTime. Or yeah. text message, or phone call, or something. It's like, yeah, like I it's... told my wife, and I was like, my dad, like we always like hug each other and stuff. Like, but it's like we're not like super affectionate right. dudes. <laughs> and I was like, now that I can't hug my dad, all I want to do is hug my dad. <laughs> right? Like, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, you think. I mean, like, just think if if this could if this would have happened right ten years ago when we 
we didn't have FaceTime. We didn't have, like, yeah. I mean, I think it would be even crazier because, you know, a lot of people kind of cr- want that attention, need that attention just for mental health and just, just for themselves. Yeah. And, and, like, it's nice to, you know, be yeah. able to have that connection. Like, thank God for technology. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> as far as, like, your everyday American being prepared for something like this, it's... Oh yeah, we were we were we not prepared do for this. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a whole other. And I, I don't think you could ever be perfect. I mean, you you know we I, I've 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 watched many YouTube videos and and read many articles on like epidemiology and and like what 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 we look at and how to prepare best for. But like you never know, right? Like it's really hard. Yeah. I think I don't know if we could have been prepared for something like this, but I think we still could have been better prepared. Oh yeah, I mean you can always be better prepared, but hindsight's like twenty twenty. Yeah, right? hindsight is always twenty twenty. <laughs> um, um, so, so that's so. How that so goes. I know, I know most of the medical field, most of the the hospitals around like DFW and everything are are more technologically advanced, right? They they use a lot more uh, uh, newer technology, such as like right, rather than just having like standard charts. They're on like an electronic iPad, and, right, and everything like that. Um, a lot of ours are. That's most really, of yeah. our charting is all done online oh okay um or um, not online but on the computer there's right. a computer in every single room in our er that they chart on the big thing has been like they've been trying to figure out ways to chart without being in the room mm-hmm. um which see, is just yeah and that, and that, that was actually going to lead into my next question was like how do you see because of this how do you see your profession your profession evolving from from this what? with how, like, how do you see your profession evolving from this coming about, right? Because, like, with teachers, it's instead of being in a physical classroom, now it's doing Zoom. Um, with with a lot with like attorneys like myself, um, a lot of older attorneys not really knowing e filing and everything like that, they're having to to learn that and everything. So it's like I I wonder what is your profession doing in evolving this that might still stay or or develop after this does that make sense yeah no um i think there will be some changes i'm not sure i don't really necessarily think that like our day-to-day will change a ton um just in the fact that obviously we're a little bit more careful with our patient like we're we're always careful just in case like, we don't want to catch anything they have vice versa um i think a lot in the medical industry will change hopefully change for the better but not necessarily in the way that it'll affect day-to-day operations like a nurse or a medic or a tech in the ER or even on the floor right um i'm hoping that we become better prepared for stuff like this i have been in a, in a couple situations where we were worried about a potentially very infectious, very potentially catastrophic disease in the ER. Oh, wow. um, okay. Had, so, so this is not your first run-in with, yeah, with something like this. <laughs> we had an Ebola here in Miami before. Wow, that's and, crazy. Wow, was this back when the Ebola, the, uh, Ebola thing happened, or was this? So no. No, no, I was still in medic school at that time. Oh, wow, okay. Um, this was like a year or two ago. Wow. And we had a patient who came in who basically we were worried about Ebola. Wow. And <laughs> let me tell you, that's, that was a that's scary. last six hours of my shift. <laughs> and so, and that was just one patient that basically shut down the normal workings of the entire year yeah ER. yeah like oh i can, I can imagine to just... move patients from the waiting room to a different area we were triaging a different area like yeah i can just imagine that i'm in the right the same entrance and so <laughs> Qu- quarantine protocol was in hard effect <laughs> yeah and so look like we have all the correct ppe right with the personal protection equipment for that but like the problem was with the pandemic, something like this, and that was one patient. But one patient shut down a forty bed ER. 
Wow. Or not shut down, but like significantly changed our normal flow. Yeah, yeah. Normally, normally you could possibly like you know yeah. just round numbers say hey, and in in thirty minutes we can see ten patients. Where now or it's some- in right. Where now it's in two hours we can see ten patients. Be- yeah, uh, because it's such a slower process. Of, and of so like you everything. have like three nurses that are just dedicated to that patient. Like there's one who goes in the room. And she's the only one that goes in the room. She's got, like, basically a full hazmat on. Right. And, like, that's just for a bolo. Like, we're not having to do that type of... Right, not with, not with this. For COVID-19. Right. But, I mean, still day-to-day, like, I had patients today where I, you know, before I go in a room, I have to put a plastic gown on. I have to put gloves on. I have to put a face mask on. I have to put a, the N95s, I'm sure. Yeah. Like, I have to put yeah. that certain type of respirator, or it's not a respirator, it's just a mask, but I have to put that, like, type of mask on just to go in the room. Right, right, and you want to make sure, and you, and you don't want to waste equipment, so you want to try to get everything that you can that, that first time or that second time, yeah. because then you're kind of wasting resources if, you know, you know, and, 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 and then you think about it, it's like, oh, well, this person didn't have it, you know, that's, you know, possibly two or three dressings and everything we could have saved but at the same oh, time believe me. what if they didn't right <laughs> that's and unfortunately that's the case so we have a screening that we're doing at my particular er i imagine we're doing it you know company-wide right but you know if you meet these criteria if you have a fever if you are short of breath if you've got a cough like even if it's just simple i've had a cough you know you're going to go in a negative pressure room, which we had to make more of, um, which basically all it is is they hook the room up and all the air gets filtered through like a medical grade HEPA filter. Right. And constantly. Yeah, and yeah. So it was just a cough. We're putting these patients in these rooms and we're having to get up every single time we go in. And it's so- not just one nurse and the doctor that goes Right, right. So, wait, so, is, so is it is it a single room or is it like a a a, a larger kind no, of waiting? Uh, room? You know, I mean, yes, it is a single room. We don't have like we have a COVID floor basically, uh-huh. where if you are if you are confirmed to have it, you go to this floor. Gotcha. And like, so not that we're trying not to expose everyone in the hospital to these. Patients. Right. And I'm I'm assuming there's a certain way that is like secured off and everything a certain elevator whatever that that's that's what they take yeah. to make sure that nothing is being passed through and everything yeah so whenever patients come in and they're suspect just suspecting of it first of all hey, I'm asking that you're now it's awful my face is always hot and <laughs> i can imagine um, <laughs> but everyone wears a mask in the er basically non-negotiable there are no visitors unless we're nearing, nearing like end of life type issues, like right. And, he, and, and even then, it's like one person, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like your spouse or something. We're pulling strings just to get you in. Yeah, for that type of thing. Yeah. Um, all of us, as far as the employees goes, are wearing masks all twelve hours. Patients are wearing masks, and then whenever they're in the room. They're in the negative airflow room. Like, we're taking a ton of precautions to make sure that we can't spread this. But unfortunately, like, we can only do so much. You yeah. know, it spreads by air, and we're doing everything we can. But part of... Well, it's, like, not, it's, not, it's not aerosolized. It's through the, the, the droplets, right? It, that's it's, true. It's, Right to I, a point. I, I think, like I, I think, I mean, that's what I've, that's what I've been hearing and everything. I know you're not, and a that, do- no, that I know you're true. not a doctor, so I know I'm, I don't want to put any liability on you or anything no, like no, no, that. No, no, <laughs> no, I'm not worried uh, about that. Like, um, but so I don't think it's like that, it's not like that, aerosol, right? Like it, it can't it just can go through be, my vents. Depending system. on, oh, like, really? Okay. So yeah, it can be, and that's the problem. So <laughs> say you have a someone who's short of breath. Like I don't like I was asthmatic as a kid. I don't know if you were. I was, yeah. I definitely was. So you like, you know, did you ever have like a nebulizer? Uh I I had I think I maybe a couple times. Mostly it was just using uh, an inhaler when I got like short so, of breath. So say that you were short of breath. Okay. And you had to use a nebulizer. Okay. Now it's aerosolized. Yeah, now yeah, now I can see that. Yeah, because you're blowing out 
and it's 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 uh attaching itself to that yeah okay got and it. so if you know so it's I not know so it's not like say... it, so it's not like aerosol it's not aerosolized like on its own it has to on its a, own it has yeah. to have like a catalyst essentially. it has to have help gotcha okay, um, okay. but the other thing about that is like the big thing that everyone's talking about is like we need ventilators well if they're ventilated and they're intubated it's aerosolized yeah so well, I mean, you think, room, you think you about a cough have... yeah like you think about a cough, right? You're normal six foot away. Okay, that's that's if you're just talking to someone and everything. But if you cough, I mean, a cough can travel a, a, a good couple of feet, just like a sneeze can, you know? Exactly. <laughs> and so, like, to work in the medical industry, you have to have a very dark sense of humor, and you're almost you're almost always looking on like the negative side. Like, you're almost always a glass half empty kind oh, of yeah. person oh yeah 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 no no I, <laughs> I, I i totally i got a lot of military friends like me personally just know. watching all the news and stuff i'm like i told my wife whenever all this was becoming a big deal i was like you know just because of what i do like i'm probably gonna get it yeah i could probably gonna my, give it to you yeah, my my cousin actually her husband uh he's an emt in the coast guard um and he treated one of the first patients in louisiana uh with uh that was on base and everything with it and he lost taste for a couple days. And that's um, a symptom. But it's that was like all, those weird outlines. Yeah, yeah, but that but that's all he had. And he's like 23, 24, 25, right? He's he's my age. And um he he lost taste for a couple days, but no underlying symptoms, and now she has it. Has she been confirmed? She ha I, I think she has been confirmed, yes. Yeah, see, and so that's the type of stuff, man. And yeah. And it's a, and so it's kind of crazy, like, oh, like, you know, you kind of think about it. I've seen all the, I've seen all the conspiracy theories, like, oh, hey, I you know, you. oh yeah, you're good. It's like, you know, oh, hey, is, uh, is it real? Is COVID real? Like, do you really know anybody that's been personally affected? It's like, now I have, now I know, like, oh yeah. I mean, it's there like, are nurses that have been at my job. Yeah. That are, and that they're... are. Now they're not working. They're not working, right? They're not working, okay. <laughs> but they're also not being paid. Why really? Like they're not like that's not considered sick leave or anything. So, whenever I got furloughed, like I said, I was one of the first people. I dealt with the first guy who died in North Texas who died from it. Um, what well, my opinion is that my company, trying to do the right thing, panic furloughed everyone <clears throat> who came in contact with the guy. Uh huh. And then, like we already talked about, basically, they looked at the numbers and they were like, we can't stop this from spreading realistically, and we can't furlough an entire hospital and shut down. Right, yeah, you, yeah, that would, so, that would be very, very bad. So what they ended up doing is they went from everyone who came in contact with the person gets furloughed to no one gets furloughed at all. If you're sick, you know, like if you feel sick, you work until you're symptomatic, and if you are proven to have it, which we're not testing our employees really. I mean, we have tested some, but of the, of all the people that I know that have been confirmed to have it at my job, our hospital didn't test and wouldn't pay for them to get tested. They went to one of the like drive yeah the drive-in free yeah yeah and got their call a couple of days later um but yeah no those nurses aren't getting paid i mean te technically they're getting paid what our company's doing is they're having to use their own pto wow and so they're using their paid time off to make sure they get paid while they're sick and it's wow that's cr definitely wow. not cool that's wow like yeah Wow, it's, that's a whole other issue. <laughs> it's pretty shitty. That is, that is. I'm, I mean, I mean, it's like I have to dial it back because yeah, I'm no, pretty no, no. passionate about it. No, no, I mean that. I mean, as a, I mean, I've seen, I've seen a lot of posts on Facebook and stuff, but I kind of believe it. It's like how you see companies reacting now, especially ones that you work for or ones that you want to work for. Like how you see them reacting now to this and how they're treating their employers. It should matter. It's gonna make a huge difference. I think post quarantine, what will happen and how, like how fast either a company will bounce back or not yeah. from this. 
right? I, th- I, think, me- I think GM might take a little bit of a hit, right? Because... Uh, I remember, I remember watching, you know, them saying, Hey, we're, you know, uh, the president kind of saying, Hey, you need to stop production on this possibly and, uh, and start helping with ventilators and everything. And it's like, they, they were kind of like, eh, and then it took like an executive order almost to say, Hey, you're going to do this. Yeah, you're going. And it's like, wait, wait, you have the technology to do this, still make money, still employ people. And and still help, and yet you have to be told to do it. Like, come on. <laughs> I'll exit the order. Yeah. yeah, like, come on. Uh, so, I hope that's the case. And like, yeah, there's stuff that goes around in like the medical industry, these folks and stuff all the time. Like, we're hoping that there are a lot of changes. Yeah. After this is all over with, like right now, we need to focus on getting people healthy. Yeah. But it's it's as soon as it's done, we need to learn from this. And, exactly. I mean, I mean, it's the same thing. And I think, I think like, you can and you can think about it like whether whichever profession it is, right? Whether it's bankers, construction, lawyers, healthcare work, like every profession is a small circle, and it's like it will get around that this person or this company did this, right? And it's you know it, it it'll come back around very very quickly or or as as it seems. Um, what do you find most challenging for yourself? And then, uh, I guess now, and also what's most challenging do you think for your, your patients, um, coming, coming in or anything like that, uh, regardless of it's COVID-19 or like, do you, do you feel like some people, like, is it challenging for people to, you know, people are kind of already hesitant to come in to an ER anyways, because of kind of the expense that it is. Right. But do you, So I'm actually kind of the opposite on that okay so this is and i don't know how like it didn't make sense to me until i started working in the er and all that kind of stuff but we are actually in busier it can have to do with where you work at Mm -hmm. the city you work in right um sometimes nicer neighborhoods don't have an issue but it's funny in that usually our busiest days are Sundays and Mondays. Wow, that's interesting. People try not to be at work. <laughs> um, so honestly, currently my hospital has, we are prepared, we are preparing or continuing to prepare for a surge. Right. Right now, all the stuff that we're seeing about Washington, Wuhan, New York, we are not at that point here where I'm at. We are preparing for it, and if it gets that bad, it won't even matter how much we've talked about or planned. It right. will never be ready for it. Yeah. Well, do you, do you do you think do do you think um, I guess I guess from like from when it initially started to when it was kind of like panic mode to where it was like, hey, we need to flatten the curve. Like, have you seen that surge kind of go down? Has it kind of remained the same? Like since the orders and everything shelter in place and everything have been put in in place here, like do you do you see that it has gone down as far? I as... I would say that yeah okay. So like, so my friends and I, my wife and I were weekends. Like, I drive an old truck. I was joking like, damn, gas is a dollar fifty. Like, I wish like this is what it's supposed to be. I thought. <laughs> um, so we have had actually had a drop, and I saw some posts on Facebook about it earlier. People who were working in Chicago, I don't know how true it is, or but they were saying like you know there are some hospitals that are actually like there's no patients. Um, and I can speak at the hospital that I work at. That like the last week, they're pushing people back, which is basically they're calling them like, hey, why don't you sleep an extra two hours because we don't need you right now. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm sending people home early because, you know, unfortunately, a lot of our clientele is they're coming in for the third time this month because their back hurts and they have chronic back pain and the pain meds we gave them. Right. Working. Right. And so we've actually seen a dip in patients like that, which is probably good. They're not in. Logging yeah. up the ER, you yeah. know the pa- now the patients that we are seeing, we have transformed the flow of our ER. 
um, we have an area just for COVID patients at this point. Mm -hmm. And then the way that our ER works is we have an area that is for your true emergency patients, strokes, heart attack, gunshots, yeah. um, codes. That area is now just for COVID patients. Okay. And then we have in the back, not in the back, but in another area, we have that which was normally used for your normal ER patient, someone like, you know, abdominal pain, high blood pressure, or something like that, a back pain type issue, I broke my arm. Um, that has transformed into our new critical area for non-respiratory patients. Oh, so okay. we're basically taking all the stuff we would normally take in our critical area mm -hmm. in that area now. Okay, I gotcha. Um, and so originally we were worried about it, but what we're seeing as of right now is that our census or our daily numbers are actually dropping, but the patients that we're seeing are way sicker and actually need to be there. Okay. Um, so, so it's, uh, and this, and that's in, those patients are in regard to COVID or just in general? No, just in general. Just in general. Okay. okay. So we are seeing COVID patients. We're seeing, I don't know if people know, I don't want to know, you know, dumb explain, mansplain no, no, no. someone, but uh, like whenever how, how, how you I intubate was, someone. How, how I was told as a, as a lawyer is when you're talking to someone, you know, they don't know all they might not know all of the latin phrases and all the 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 the, the legal jargon it's mm -hmm. just talk to it essentially and it's not to be rude to anybody uh, just that, assume they yeah, don't know yeah essentially talk to them like you're talking to a fifth grader right if they know it then they'll let you know very quickly and then you've learned but if, so, you know for the most part that's how i talk to people when i'm doing my so thing like, is yeah <laughs> basically if you're going to innovate someone that's when you're going to put the breathing tube down their throat, mm -hmm. put them on a ventilator, all that kind of stuff. Um, we are intubating more people right now than we normally would. Um, because of, like, the aeros aerosolization thing, like we were kind of talking about, you know, if they're on a breathing treatment, if right. they're on CPAP or BiPAP, which are other ways to help them breathe. Unfortunately, that all that does is increase the risk of exposure of the people in the room because the virus is aerosolized. Right. So we're jumping straight from this person needs a little extra oxygen through a mask. Uh huh. Skipping all those steps and jumping, just put a bridge. Yeah. Put them on a ventilator. But if they're on a ventilator, they're in a negative pressure room, right? So normally, not always. Well, I mean, if they, well, if they, I guess if they are testing positive for COVID, then... It, if they're positive for COVID, we are doing our damnedest to put them in a negative pressure. Gotcha, okay, Absolutely. okay. Especially okay. if they're in a negative Right, right, because, um, because you don't want it to, because you don't want it to transmit like we were, like we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, okay. I mean, you can be innovated for a number of reasons. Right, right, right. oh, yeah. I, yeah, and, and I, I've I, had I, surgery yeah. on my ears, and I'm 100% sure I was innovated. Yeah, like I'm, a, like I'm, a, yeah, I'm assuming. I mean, I've, I've, I mean, we've kind of watched all the doctor shows everywhere. But like, if you go in for any surgery, or if your throat is closing up because you had an allergic reaction, yep. right? There's a number of things that they're putting a, a, a tube down your throat to get air to your lungs, right? So I, I get that. <laughs> so I guess. Um, do you see anything possibly? I mean, I don't, I don't want to stir up a whole controversy, especially on a YouTube video. Yeah. But I have to ask you, just because, I mean, especially since I have you, do you see anything, like, that are being reported that possibly aren't true or, mess or necessarily, like, half-truths or, like, just trying to make a headline? You know, anything like that. Not, I guess not necessarily, like, lying, <laughs> but, you know what I mean? Cause, yeah. Because I saw, like, I, mean, I, saw, not, like, like, I saw like, that thing on... Nothing comes to the top... Well, like, I saw one thing, I, and I, right, it's Facebook, so I saw it on yeah. Facebook, but, like, the big thing was, Twitter. like, if you die of a heart attack, and you're in the morgue, and they're doing the autopsy, and they test, and you have the COVID <laughs> antibodies, they rule it as a COVID death, even if it was I a have, heart I attack. I have read that. And so, uh, yeah, I is it, <laughs> don't know if it's true. Right. You know, I, as far as we're concerned. Okay. So, basically, <laughs> we've had 
I know that whenever someone who comes in and is coding, which is basically like, right, they're they're know, flatlining. Like, CPR in progress. Yeah, like, they're dead. We're trying to get back. I know that you're treating all those patients as if they are COVID patients. The problem is, is if that's the case and they can't get them back and they do pass, we're not wasting a COVID test on those patients. Gotcha. So, basically, the way that works is, and I don't want to assume that people know what happens when someone passes or a loved one passes, but basically, the first thing that happens is we have to report it to a medical examiner. Right. So, we'll call the county medical examiner. Um, if that patient has a doctor who's been over there here for a while or he who is comfortable signing a death certificate, mm-hmm. they don't have to go get an autopsy. Okay. Um, if they do go, say a PCP isn't comfortable because they don't want to be held liable or something like that, then they will go to a medical examiner. Um, I know that they are testing people post-mortem for COVID. Right. But that's and through, those tests but that's through like the, the county or... Suspected. Yeah. But that's, well, I don't that's through the yeah, that's through the county or the state. Yeah, and so that, yeah. I mean, I saw that post and I figured you probably had too. I was just I was curious about like that 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 kind of seems very, I guess, underhanded, right? Because so I don't want to say that I don't believe it because part <laughs> of me is like, yeah, I could see them doing that to try and dial back the news a little bit. Yeah, well, I mean, you but think I, of the like, you think of the news. Bad news sells. Yeah, right? and like, I also like this is I do know this like whenever this first started and we're being a little bit more liberal now because tests are a little bit more easily available and just this week we've actually got rapid tests as far as we test you we send it to the lab and it only takes about 30 40 minutes to come back yeah i've seen i've seen now, it gone from like weeks to days to hours to now minutes what the problem is is we're not using those tests on everybody Right, I guess unless they are showing a certain amount of symptoms or something. Or they're being admitted to the hospital. Okay. If they're coming into our hospital, we want to know if they have it or not. Because right. Because we need to know where we, put, where we can put them. Right. If you're, you know, healthy enough to be like, well, I mean, if they have it, we, you know, go home and self-quarantine. So we'll still test you if we have tests, which can change day by day. Yeah. But we'll give you the, you know, no news is good news, but expect something in the next couple of days. If yeah. we call you and tell you that you have it, you're going to have to self-quarantine. Yeah. We're only doing rapid tests for the most part on patients that are getting admitted because we need to know if we're going to put them on our COVID floor. Right, 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 right. With the general population. Gotcha. And then I guess a big question is, that so it's like, is... Is is your hospital or is somebody following up with someone who is self quarantining? Or I mean, I, I, you don't have to tell me like all the procedures or anything like that. But yeah. it's like, is is there someone helping them police themselves, or is it a, as far a fully as the general public yeah. or employees? Well, uh, uh, like general public, like is, is it is it fully no. is it fully like I don't, well, trust I don't system want to speak, or honor system? I don't want to speak out of sh- right, you know, <laughs> but basically. My impression of it is that we go over that, like, say you come to the ER and you're worried about it, it's in your discharge instructions. A nurse will come in, they'll tell you the summary of your visit, they'll tell you your ending vital signs, and they'll say, hey, look, you know, this is a possibility that you have this coronavirus. We want you to self-quarantine for 14 days. Here's your work note. If... Here's another thing that's really bothering me that just popped in my head. Okay. <laughs> Employ- employers that are requiring their employees to have negative tests to come back to work is bullshit. <laughs> like, I have my wife's middle sister works for a company. She had a fever, just a regular fever. She's a younger girl. Not fine. She has a ton of, you know, health issues at her young age. She had a fever and they sent her home. And they told her that you have to have a negative coronavirus test before you come back to work. Hmm. If a young girl in her 20s walked into my ER and said, I want to get tested for corona, and she has no symptoms, she is never getting tested. Wow. Because 
we need to test the people who have symptoms and the older you know like we talked about like i'm going to school together at the same age yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> we're saving our tests for those parents, for those people, our parents, the grandparents, stuff like that. Like a twenty-something-year-old right. with no right. symptoms. Right. Well, because you're, you're, yeah, because you're, because you're the tested. Yeah, well, because you're, you're the hospital. You have a a limited amount that you need, especially like we were saying, like admitting patients and everything. Whereas she could possibly go to one of those drive-ins. Well, so the drive-in things are kind of, like they're not a sham. But here's the thing is they tell you that they have open drive through testing, but if you go and read the article, it's only for the elderly. Well, I know that that responders. was, I know that was the case as far as like those certain drive in ones. And, yeah. and for the first, I want to say week or two that they were doing it. And then they were saying, Hey, you know what? Now that we actually, because they got more tests, it was, yeah, that, yeah it was because they had a shortage of tests. So they wanted to make sure that they were testing the most susceptible, susceptible to it. And then as they got more tests, they were like, okay, if you have the symptoms, come in. Right? Now we can, exactly. now, now we so, have the But that's the, the thing is we're still at that point. So at first we were only testing like the really sick and first responders. Now we're testing our admitted patients and patients with symptoms. But the problem is like, you know, whenever I got quarantined, I can't tell you if I had it or not. I had a headache for a day or two. My throat itched for a day or two. That could be you know, allergies, or, headache, yeah. or they could be off symptoms of coronavirus. Yeah. But like, you know, I work for a hospital and I didn't even get tested and won't get tested. Yeah. Um, so with stuff like that, I guess the part that frustrates me is a lot of the people don't have jobs technically because they can't go back until they have a negative test. Yeah. And most places won't test them unless they're symptomatic and actually sick. And so basically you have these people who technically aren't unemployed, but they can't go to work. And like, honestly, you shouldn't go to work. Like I'm a huge proponent of the social distancing thing, and I do think it works. And I think we are flat on the curve, but I just think it's kind of bullshit that that, I don't yeah, want that, to say that we're giving employers too much power, but like they're not doctors. Yeah, no, no, no. Or healthcare workers. And it's just frustrating because those patients come in. They, you know, I have to have a job. I have to pay my bills. I have to get this negative test. And like, I get it. We get it. But we can't waste a test on you in these times, unfortunately. Like, you're just yeah. going to have to go home and self quarantine for a few weeks. And if you get sick, then that's probably what it is, and if not, you're probably okay. Yeah. But and then on the flip side, jobs some jobs won't accept that. You have to be able to show them a doctor's not even a test, and like we can't provide that. Well, yeah, because say you have a thousand tests for the day, and you have fifteen hundred people that are coming in. Oh, right. You're overshooting it there. Right. Oh, I will. I'm giving. <laughs> ra- I'm giving round numbers. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> yeah. But like you think, like, like say you have 500 tests, you have a thousand people come in, right? Mm-hmm. Now you have to, right? You have to triage. You have to yeah, figure out who, who is the most likely to have it, who are the most likely to need it and, and go from there. And even, and even then you still might, you know, you might cut out a third of who you need. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, there you might you might use all of those 500 tests and there still may be 100 people that need that test, but you're out for the day. Right. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And so it's kind of crazy. OK, well, um, I actually just I mean, we kind of went through all the questions that I had or anything. I mean, if, if you want to okay. s- say anything or anything like that, uh, if not, I mean, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm trying to get. I have a lot of interviews lined up with like a lot of different oh, I'm professions. Sure you do, so, dude. so I'm excited. Like, I, like timeline I, was popping. Well, like I didn't, yeah, I didn't think a lot of people were going to react to it as they did. And I mean, I have, I have teachers, I have old schoolmates, I have uh, that are all, you know, lawyers, teachers, uh, uh, shoot, I have a plumber, librarian, uh, just all these different professions that were like, Hey, I want to do this. Like, Oh yeah. That, okay, cool. You know? And I, I just, cause I thought about it and I was like, I'm tired of seeing the news and I'm tired of seeing the same thing. Like I get, we need daily updates. I understand that, but it's like when you're just touching on one thing, or maybe two things, you're you're leaving out the rest of of everybody else that 
they don't know or or you know they they need their voice heard too you know <laughs> and just just because i was i was just like learning something new so it's like i don't know about right the the healthcare industry i don't know about school the school districts you know i have these preconceived notions or or something that that i've been told or seen in my life and it's like i want to know more and i want to know what's going on right because if i plan on having kids one day or someday soon hopefully you know i need to know brave man yeah i need i need to know what teachers are doing oh i was a horrible kid i am <laughs> man i am scared like i'm not scared of ha- i'm scared of having a daughter <laughs> Yeah, for real. Like I can handle a boy. I, think, I knew I, me as yeah. a kid. Yeah, I didn't suck. But I wasn't great. Oh yeah. Oh no. Like, was if I had a daughter. Yeah. Oh god. Oh man. well, because it was hilarious. I mean, like I was a terror as a kid, and like I'd go over to friends' houses, and I'd, I'd volunteer to help wash the dishes and clean up and everything. And the parents are like, "Oh man, he's he's the best kid in the world. He's so awesome. He did this." And they're like, "You're talking about my child." I'm like, "Bro, did your parents ever get mad at you?" Like, oh. my dad would always get so mad at me. He was like, I heard you were super respectful. And yeah. well, you were my... like the greatest kid ever at someone else's house. Why don't I get that? Yeah. I was like, sorry, dude. Oh, you yeah. Me. You get to deal with the real me. Well, I do I do give credit to my dad for teaching me manners and teaching me, like, yes, sir, and no, sir, and everything. Because back right before I went to high school, I got to meet the chief of the Irving Fire Department. And, awesome. and, and like one of the head sergeants in the, in the police department, uh, because we started a little, tra- a little trash can fire. I mean, like one of those little popcorn bucket trash cans, <laughs> uh, because we were burning a book. We were bored. It was like summer vacation. We're like, Hey, we don't got to do this math class or whatever anymore. And, uh, I tried to, I tried to put it out and, uh, yeah, <laughs> Cop you start up. one fire. Yeah, yeah. I start one fire. Yeah. And like I could have gotten in a lot of trouble, and the cop was like, "Who, you know, who did this?" And I was like, oh, "I took blame." I was like, "It was me," and everything, and 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 it's like, "Yes, sir, no, sir." Answers questions, what didn't have an attitude or anything. I was just more embarrassed. I was like, "Man, come on," and <laughs> and he was like, "Well, you know, call 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 when your parents get here." And I was like, "Okay." And the cop talked to my dad for like ten minutes. My dad was just like, "Get in the car, let's go." And I was like, "I'm not getting a ticket." And he goes, "No." Yes. <laughs> no, but you get an ass beat. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah man oh man i got beat and then they were like all right now you're grounded for like two weeks i was like no yeah. oh i was pissed all right man well i will let you i know you got off i know it's a little late i don't know exactly what time you're going to i know you got some days off and everything but uh thank you for doing this man do uh, uh keep up to date with me more than welcome to the chat i was talking with your with your sister uh around the wedding That's and right. everything so that was great <laughs> <laughs> so yes sir all right man thanks i appreciate it i that's why I kind of jumped on the idea. Yeah, man. Well, if you think if you think of any yeah, well if you if you think of anything else, or if you and your uh, any more coworkers that you think might want to have more of a discussion or anything like that, like more of like a round table or something, uh, let me know. We will we will get it set up because I think that'd be really yeah, yeah, cool. Dude. I mean, one person one person's opinion is different from another's to different from another's, and just it'd be I think it'd be really cool. Absolutely, just Sweet, to kind of get like a broad. Yeah, a broad view of everyone's opinion. Yeah, what what do they think going on? You know, because you think you might think that uh, 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 a is the best way to move forward. Come come post, you know, COVID nineteen and everything, and then this person might think, well, hey, this actually might be a little bit better. And so it's like opening a channel of discussion, especially with people in the same profession, because they're like, oh, you know what, we could we could work on that. Talk to our supervisor, or whatever, and, and and get it. You know, so yeah. Always, always for change, as long as it's for the better. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, well, perfect, man. I will uh, holler at you later. Dude, let me know. Thank you, I'm sir. excited. Of yes, course. Sir. Have a good night, man. Me too, brother. All right, hey, guys. If you want to see what I use, right, on my actual game and my setup and my stream and everything, you can go right down there at twitch.tv slash TexasMadeVape. Check out the Amazon deal. See everything that I use within my stream. You can also check out the schedule, a couple other things that we have going on with Indie Boost, as well as the Crystal Born Challenge, and part of the Discords, the communities that I'm also a part of. Also, you can look at the Treehouse merch right here. I go, just click on it. It's going to take you right here. And all you got to do is just look up. We have some notes and stuff. Uh, we also got some stickers, some drinks, and other things. Uh, just take a look at it. Also, make sure that if you enjoy this YouTube video, just click on the subscribe button click on the like button and then make sure also that you are hitting that bell so you get those notifications of when every time something gets uploaded thanks guys